Today's video is about how you can get the perfect credit score and the simple steps you will need to take. Think of your credit score as your report card for how well you handle your finances. In school, your grade might depend on turning in your homework on time or passing your tests. In life, your credit score is based on making your payments on time and the amount of debt you have, along with a few other things that I will cover in this video. There are many places where you can check your credit score. For example, if you have an American Express or Discover credit card, they offer a feature where you can check your score for free. However, if you don't have an American Express or Discover credit card, there are some other credit card companies that let you check your score for free. But you can also use websites like Credit Karma, which is also free. Having a good score is something that most people don't realize how valuable it is until you try to make a big purchase like a house and then you realize no one will give you a loan because of your bad credit history. So having a good credit score will not only make it easier to get loans, but it will also save you money by being able to get loans with lower rates. Then having a good score will also make you thousands by being able to qualify for credit cards that offer great bonuses and cash back. So just by following the simple steps in this video, you will be saving thousands and the best part is it's 100% free. And if you're new here, my name is Edgar and on this channel we talk about personal finance, investing and business. So if that is something you're interested in, consider subscribing. The first step to getting a perfect score is understanding what makes up your credit score and how everything is calculated. Just like in school where different assignments and tests are weighted differently, the same is true of your credit score. For example, in college, you can have a class where homework is worth 10%, then quizzes are worth 15%, your midterm is 20%, projects are also 20%, and then your final exam is worth 35% of your overall grade, while your credit score is broken up into sections also. So if you want a perfect score, you must do well in other categories. Now let's take a look at what makes up your credit score and how much each part counts towards your overall score. The biggest item is your payment history making up 35% of your total score. Then there is the total amount of debt you owe and that makes up 30%. Next is the length of your credit history which is 15% of your total score. Then is the credit mix you have which makes up 10% of your score. And fifth is any new credit which makes up 10% of your total score. Put all of these together and you have everything that is used to calculate your credit score. Now let's take a deeper look into each category. The biggest factor making up 35% of your score is your payment history. This is pretty easy to understand, it's just making all of your payments on time and never missing a payment. This is calculated by taking all of your on time payments and dividing it by your total payments. So let's say you are new to having credit, so you've only had one credit card in the last 2 years or 24 months, and in that time you've only had one late payment. Seems pretty harmless right? Well let's do some math and find out. So out of 24 total payments, you made 23 payments on time. So that means you're going to divide 23 on time payments by 24 total payments which equals 95.8%. So that means you've made your payments on time 95.8% of the time. Now if we look at this chart, you can see making your payments on time 95.8% of the time puts you in a very poor section. You might have assumed that in the 2 years you've had your credit card, only having one late payment was not a big deal. But actually it is. Now let's assume you've had credit for a long time and you've had various credit cards, car loans and a mortgage over time. If you've had 5 credit cards over the last 10 years, then you've had a total of 600 payments. Then let's say you've had a car payment 5 out of the last 10 years, so that's a total of 60 payments. And then you bought a house 2 years ago, so you've had 24 mortgage payments. That means you've had a total of 684 payments, and if you had 3 late payments, but that's 681 on-time payments divided by 684 total payments, which means you paid on-time 99.6% of the time. And making your payments on time 99.6% of the time puts you right on the border of a perfect score. Even though in the second example this person has had 3 times more late payments than the person in the first example, because the person in the second example has had a longer credit history, those late payments won't affect them as much. So the first step to getting a perfect score is making sure you never miss a payment even if you only make the minimum payment, just make sure you always pay on time. The second factor that makes up your credit score is the total amount of credit used and this makes up 30% of your overall score. This just means how much credit do you have available versus how much credit you actually use. To make this calculation, you take your total credit used and divide it by the total credit you have available. If you have a total of $1,000 in available credit but your balance is $800, then the percentage of used credit will be 80% and using 80% of your available credit puts you in a very poor section. However, if you have a total of $30,000 in available credit and your balance is $2,000, then the percentage of credit being used is only 6.7%, which means you're in the excellent column. So the second step to getting a perfect score is to maintain your debt level at less than 9% of your overall credit limit. The third factor that makes up your credit score is the average length of your credit history, which is 15% of your total score. For example, if you open your first credit card 2 years ago and then you open another one today, 
you would take the average and that gives you a credit history of one year. Basically, when it comes to this section, my advice is that you begin to establish credit history as soon as you can. You can even do what I did and go apply for a credit card as soon as you turn 18. Just make sure to use it responsibly. You should also avoid closing credit cards, especially if they are the credit cards you've had for the longest time because it can really lower the average age of your credit history. You could easily drop from having 5 years of credit history, which is fair, down to 2 years, which is very poor, all because you closed some long-term accounts. With this section, two good tips are to start building your credit history as soon as you can and maintain all of your accounts open even if you don't use them. And the second tip is to have patience. You will not be able to make the jump from poor to excellent in this section by changing some behaviors like in the last sections. Also, the average length of your credit history only makes up 15% of your total score, so it's not going to have a major impact on your total credit score. If you place a little low in this section, just make sure you score high in the other sections. The fourth part that makes up your credit score is the total number of accounts that you have open and what type of credit these accounts are, and this makes up 10% of your total score. In order to place in the excellence section, you will need to have more than 21 lines of credit, which I know sounds pretty crazy, and I'll be honest, I don't even have that many lines of credit open. Most people find this hard to believe because you would think having less lines of credit open means you're better off financially and you don't need so much credit, but that's not the case. The logic here is that the more lines of credit you have open, the more credit you have access to, which helps boost your credit score because when you go and spend $1,000 and you only have a credit limit of $2,000, that shows you have a high usage of your total credit. But when you spend $1,000 and you have $30,000 in available credit, then your usage will appear low. Also, the more credit you have open, the more total payments you will have, which is just more data the credit bureau can collect to get a better idea of how well you handle your finances. They also want to see that you have a mix of credit, so it's better to have some credit cards, a car loan, and maybe a mortgage than having all credit cards because this shows you're able to handle different types of credit responsibly. Don't get me wrong though, if you're not responsible with your credit cards and managing your finances, then having more access to credit is worse than having one or two open accounts. If you have 21 lines of credit and you max out every single one, then it's going to show a very high usage of your available credit, which is a great way to bring your score down. Also, if you're having trouble keeping up with your payments on two credit cards and you go get 15 credit cards and you're just putting yourself in a bad position because if you miss payments or default on any of the credit cards, your score will be anything but perfect. You obviously shouldn't go open a ton of credit cards right away so you can bump up your score in this section because doing that will bring your score down in other areas. Even though for this category, having more open credit is better than less, you should be careful when you apply for more credit and make sure to use it responsibly and stay on top of your payments. The fifth part that makes up your credit history is any hard increase you had recently and this makes up 10% of your total credit score. When people run your credit score, there are two types of increase they can run and which increase they run depends on the purpose for looking at your credit score. The first one is a hard increase and this is normally used when you apply for a car loan, a mortgage, or a new credit card. Then a soft increase used when you don't need a full and detailed report of your credit score which is normally what happens when you check your credit score with American Express or Credit Karma. The ones you want to avoid doing often are hard increase because the way the credit agencies see it is that something in your life changed and now you need access to credit. And this is why you don't want to go and apply for more credit all at once to boost up the section that measures how many lines of credit you have open. If you try to reach 21 lines of credit too soon, you will end up lowering your credit score by having too many hard increases in a short period of time. However, the good thing about hard increase is that after 12 months, those increases will not affect your credit score and after 2 years, they drop off your credit report entirely. Another benefit is, if you're shopping for your house and you meet with different lenders and they all run your credit, it will only count as one inquiry. Even though these are all hard inquiries, the credit agencies will group them as one inquiry and they do this so you can shop around for the best rates without affecting you in a negative way. However, for this to be true, you will have to do this within a short period of time because if you meet with two lenders at the beginning of the year, then another three lenders in six months, then the increase will not be grouped into one inquiry because the time length between them was too long. In order to place in the excellent category for this section, you should have zero hard increase within the last 12 months, which may seem odd, but overall just remember this is only 10% of your total credit score. So if you keep the hard increase down to a bare minimum, it will not have a huge impact on your credit score. Maintaining your credit score as high as possible is just as important as saving for retirement or having an emergency fund. Each one of these has its own purpose and your credit score is used to determine the likelihood that you will repay your debts and therefore a low credit score will make it more difficult to qualify for loans. Credit scores can range from a low 300 to a high of 850 and typically a score above 700 is considered good. But if you want the absolute best rates and offers, you should aim for 800 and above. Because a higher score means you've handled your finances well and you've made good credit decisions, creditors will feel more confident that you will repay your debts. 
Credit scores are probably the most widely used method to qualify someone when it comes to borrowing anything from a car loan to a mortgage. Even if you're trying to rent an apartment, they will look at your credit history. All you have to do to maintain a good credit score is dedicate a little time here and there to check up on everything and make sure your payments are made on time and your balance levels are not too high. And the best part is maintaining a good credit score will cost you zero dollars but it can save and make you thousands by getting lower rates and better cashback offers. And with that being said, I hope this video helped you understand why your credit score is important and the steps you can take to get a perfect score. And if you enjoyed watching or you found this information helpful, it would really help if you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.